Well, looks like we're here for the uh, Social Media 101. And we generally start off the question of, for the session is, what do you folks know? Because if you already have social media accounts set up, obviously we don't want to teach you how to set up a Twitter account or a Facebook account. If you're preliminarily using them, uh, again, we don't want to necessarily start out with a, this is how you log in, if you know how to do that. So, what do you know? Um, I, I mean, I know how to set things up. Okay. Implementation, eh, you know. Okay. So um, I wasn't sure where things were going to fall versus the one one versus the two or one, um, but like I've got a week from Memorial for this, so okay. I'm trying to say, ah, oh, here's the one one and see what you know, see okay. what's about them a couple weeks after this. Well, the nice thing about a small group is we can make it a conversation. You know, so if there's something in particular we're looking for, we we can address some questions and we can kind of extend that two or one session as to how to. Um, same thing goes for you folks as I'm like looking to go this group <laughs> over to this, this side. You want me to move? <laughs> I just didn't want to sit in this front of the streaming. Yeah, no, 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 good, good, okay. good call on that one. Okay. No, it's, it's cool. Um, social media, you know, public speak 101. You, you look out and you, you make contact with people, so I'm actually looking forward and looking, so, so we're good. Um, so what, what sort of information are, are you folks looking for? Um, come on, Tessie, hi. I don't know. Well, I use Facebook a lot. I have yeah. used Twitter, but only for work purposes. Okay. So I probably don't need help setting up an account. Okay. Um, I don't know. Maybe use things better. Okay. So, so we've already got the we've got them set up. We don't need to go through that portion of it. And we're looking at the how do we use them. We can do that. You're you're new. I'm new. Hi. Sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. You're you're fine. You're fine. Um, fine. I don't really know what this class is. It's just going to be everything. In social it media. is social media basics. So we're covering Twitter. We're covering media. Facebook. <laughs> you know, we're we're going to touch on LinkedIn. Um, you know, the, the basic social media platforms. Okay. Because anything you can. Um, really, I guess you're asking people what they're looking. We're for. we're trying yeah. to gauge where we're starting from. Okay. And I would love some very basic info on, like, I don't have a Twitter account. I don't know how to do that. Okay. Um, I have Facebook, but okay. I'm, I don't really do that much. Let's well, say I never post. All right. Well, we're home oh, once I did. And, and what other such blogging? Okay. Like how you would just set up the initial blog. Blog? Any, any, but, you know, whatever. I'm just telling that's, you what that, that's, cool. that, that's good. My needs are really basic. All right. Well, as far as setting up a Twitter account for a podcast, like yeah, you know, those, those are all going to be in various sessions throughout the, the time here. Um, we actually have a blogging 101 and 201, so how to set up a blog. Right. And, and it's, that was this morning. Right. But I missed the first session. But they will be available right. online. Right. So um, what we're going to talk about here is obviously if you have a Facebook account, setting up a Twitter account is not much different than setting up a Facebook, oh, Facebook yeah. account. You go to the site, you put in your email address, and so what is the site that you go to? Twitter.com. Okay. And it, like, you, you can just set it up basic. You put in your, your email address, you choose a username. So you can choose a username other than your own name. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you can be anonymous. Mm -hmm. It depends on, um, it, it, that's one of those things is you want to figure out what you want to use it for. If it's something where you're going to be in, oh, I'm going to get the camera. <laughs> If it's something where you want to use it for business purposes, where you're going to want people to know your name and be familiar with you, then you're going to do some sort of version of your name. Um, if you want it to just be something more for socializing, maybe you're going to use a nickname. I use, uh, I'm Kay Dutters, I'm a total nickname, and that, that'll lead, um, it, it's very interesting for me that, that in different social circles, people know me as different names, like people don't know my real name because I've gone by this nickname for so long. Can you, can you use, um, with any Accounts, can you have more than one Twitter account? Generally, you have to have a separate email account to sign up for a separate Twitter. Um, because of their notification systems, they that's how they differentiate. Um, I have a couple of different Twitter accounts, and I have a couple of different 
email addresses that I haven't linked to. And I love my iPhone because I have all of my email coming to one inbox on my iPhone, so I, I have it all together. Yeah, it, it makes it easy that way. So instead of me having to check four different email clients, I just get on my iPhone and I pull up my mail client. There we go, it's all there. And, and just even just putting it all out there at the beginning, okay. if there's you know, any, anything you can discuss regarding why one would even use things like Twitter or a podcast or and that blogs is, that or is definitely any of those, like what, can you, what is this all about? That is definitely something so that we do cover. I, I don't it's, know, I it's all good. less advanced than most people. It's, it's all good. It's, it's, like, it's, it's a basic one-on-one and we're doing it as a conversation. Right. So we're, we're gauging. Mm -hmm. Where, where our folks are, and then we're going from there. So like, so as far as setting it up, it's not different than the other stuff. You, you use your email, you create a username, you, you log in through the website, and you're good to go. Um, <clears throat> utilizing Twitter versus Facebook. There are different things that you can do with Twitter. There are different things that you can do with Facebook. And I would say, similarly, with regard to like Pinterest and all the rest of those, I don't even know if that's in social media. It is. But just mm -hmm. what different mm -hmm. things are out there, but go, Twitter seems to be really popular yeah. now. So. Twitter Twitter is usually like, if I think social media, I think Twitter primarily. Mm -hmm. and that, that's just my mindset, because that's what I primarily use when I'm engaging with people. Um, Twitter is nice because it's short, it's sweet. You have 140 characters, you get it out there, and it's kind of, think of it along the lines of a group text message, that anybody who is following you will get this message, and then they can reply to it, they can respond to it, they can they can share it with their with their followers. Can they respond with more than 140 characters? Twitter limits to 140 characters. Okay. Um, if you want something more than 140 characters, that's why Facebook is nice because you can actually do a post. You know, you can write up paragraphs. You can actually put a nice little chunk of information in there in Facebook. So depending on what you're using your social media for, you, you can make a determination of is this better for Twitter. Is this better for Facebook, or is this better for have a blog? Um, if you have a blog, like I, I know with our PodCamp website, for instance, we have it set up that when we make a post, we've announced our sponsors whenever we've got a new sponsor in. You know, hey, welcome, you know, we're, we're proud to, to have you know, so-and-so as a sponsor. We put up the website bit and doing the introduction, and then we have that set that when we hit click to make that live go post, or post live, mm -hmm. it automatically sends it to our Twitter feed and our Facebook feed. So the way that we have it set up through the blog automatically puts it on Twitter and Facebook. So you get a nice little snippet on Twitter and Facebook that says whatever the title of, of the post is. So for, for our sponsors, for instance, it's, you know, Libsyn sponsors PodCamp Pittsburgh. <clears throat> and it'll post from the, the PodCamp Twitter account um, Libsyn sponsors podcast Pittsburgh, and then it has a link that people can click on to actually pull up that that post. Uh, so that's that's something that you can set. So you can have links from your blog exactly. to to your Facebook account or to Twitter exactly. and vice versa. Exactly, you can link, or but it can go. You can link it, but you're saying it can also go automatically. You can do it so that it automatically sends it out. Um, and as far as like tweet, when you're looking at Twitter versus Facebook, another thing is, is what you're going to be using it for. Is it, if it's a business purpose, um, I would suggest having a Facebook because that gives you a landing place for people to search for you. Um, it's a nice place if you have a business, uh, a, a brick and mortar place, or any place where you can put hours, your address, and how people can contact you. I have a Facebook. Yeah, I would suggest that because that, that'll also come up in searches. Okay, so also why do you I don't want to monopolize you, so I'm just, just stop me, because I just have some, so just finally, you know, why do you the, have a Facebook versus just a web, your own website that's not a Because website. to have your own website, you generally have to have a space to host it, which comes into different requirements that you have to have. Facebook allows that you can do it all through Facebook. So if, if you do your, like if, if you purchase a domain name, you know my blog, my my website .com, you can post you can have that so that 
that goes to your Facebook page. If you do a full-on website, you have to find a, a website host. You have to set up the website. So you, you have to know more information. Facebook makes it easy, and it just doesn't. It, it spams right there. Um, Katie's actually calling up the Point Park School of Communication site, and this is this is their site for Point Park. For it's on Facebook. It is on Facebook. It's, it's not a separate. It's not a, nope. a, a this, website this, in and of itself. This is their Facebook page. But did they have to purchase the domain Point Park College? Not for this particular thing. So a lot of times, because you were saying purchasing a domain name, well, where would you? Even where, I mean, I, there isn't like a domain name store. That where would be that would be something that would be covered more in, um, like probably the blogging yeah. session, is okay. to is to where to purchase that. So we're we're not going to get into that I'll here. But okay. yeah, and we can we can have a discussion after sure, sure. after the class too. That that's probably cool. Okay. Um, so yeah, those those are the basics for it. Okay. So if you're just looking to like start, you want to do, um, you're starting a small business. Absolutely. Start a website mm -hmm. Absolutely. there, and and then you can have you, if you want to do a blog, you can link it to your Facebook page and yes. vice versa. Yes. Um, and similarly to Twitter. Okay. This is for example. Uh, this is St. Lawrence Chocolate here. Um, this is a chocolate place nearby, and with theirs in their about section, this gives you the opportunity to. Put in their address and a map so they can easily spot you. And that's on Facebook. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. There's yes. a lot of options as far as business wise on Facebook. It's you can really see, easy. Is there a blog on that too? It's almost like your timeline, where if you would go into your main timeline and you post stories, and you could attach pictures or links or whatever you would like with it. And one of the other neat things about Facebook is if you're posting, um, well, we are selling. Or, and then this is this is a little bit more, but you can do the American Heart Association. You can actually tag different. But um, I mean, I'll just do Point Park. Sorry, Sorry I'm like. <laughs> so uh, we're selling chocolate for Point Park University. And if I were to put that, and I put that in there, this is this is a lot of things to take. I'm sorry, I'm trying to give you a lot of things at once, but I'm just kind of showing you the options. You could tag somebody in a post. Like for example, I would tag Point Park in this post, and when I post this, they would be notified that they were tagged. And then that way, um, if someone was looking at this, going, "Oh, I wonder what Point Park University is," and they'll click that, and that'll take them to the face our face Point Park Facebook page. And then Point Park will see that, and they can also share it. So therefore, your message kind of gets shared on and on. That's another opportunity for that. Okay. I'm, I just still see a lot of. I know, and um, this is in my particular business. Um, who they have their own separate. Looks like they have just their own website still. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, so that entails finding a place. And yeah, my my husband, for instance, Sir Tom Media, we're doing the video for for podcast. He has a Facebook. He has a Twitter, and he has a main website. They're all kind of integrated, so when he shares something on one of them, it shares across all three of them. Uh, it depends on how people are looking to find you. If somebody who uses Facebook more often than they use Twitter, if you have a Facebook page, they're going to check out your Facebook page. If you have somebody who uses Twitter more than you know a blog, they'll check out your Twitter. You know they'll they'll see what you're saying on Twitter and they'll they'll take that information. Mm -hmm. So it, it depends on. Who you're reaching out to? Because if you don't have, if somebody doesn't have a Facebook page, they're not gonna. And you have a Facebook website, they're not necessarily gonna be able to find you. Absolutely, they can right. still search for they, you. They can they search Google search or something. And it's gonna prompt. Mm -hmm. It's gonna prompt you them to, oh, they have a Facebook page, and then it's gonna prompt them to sign up for Facebook in order to, to fully view right. everything. If they, okay. So, but if it's you know, you know, a lot of people want chocolate and they don't have Facebook, so. So that would be an instance where it might be a good idea to have a separate website. But with with uh, Facebook, when you when you create a business, that gives you the opportunity to. You're gonna if if I wasn't logged into. No, that's all right. Yeah, this, this 
just happens to be a site that she uses. Um, company that she does work for. So. But it's, um, this, is, this is the information. I'm not signed into Facebook. So this is what I can see. Oh, interesting. So I can still see the hours and the um, address. And there. this is actually connected to their official page. So Facebook, it, it's a good option if, you, if you're not sure where to start as far as social media goes. Facebook is it's like LinkedIn. This is a good place to get started because the amount of information you can put there and how easily searchable it is. Yeah, and like she just said, if you're doing it for business, Facebook is easier for a business aspect of it than necessarily Twitter is. Um, again, Twitter is more streamlined and it's more. I mean, you can you can show pictures and such with Twitter, but um, I, I like to I like to say this each year whenever I do the, the social media one on one. Twitter is the social media for people with ADD. It's, it's short, it's sweet, it's right there. Five minutes later, the conversation is you know, technically still in your, your stream, but it's so far down your stream that you can't pay attention to it, or that you won't pay attention to it. So it, it's more for instantaneous. Um, if, if somebody adds your, your Twitter account, so like we're telling people to hashtag PCPDH9 with any of the content they're doing for, for this event, because if we search Hashtag PCPDH9. Anybody who has used that hashtag, all of their content will be able to, to be seen. So we can see what people are tagging for the event. We have people talking about sessions that they're attending. We have people talking about um, the sponsors that are here. We have people talking about the fun stuff that we have going on, you know, whether it's a hallway conversation or whether it's um, we, we did some fun stuff with with our, our social media, we have the, the picture frame that's upstairs that uh, has has the Cod Camp logo on it, and we have the, the cute little face things, just so you can take some funny pictures and just get them out there and just have fun. Yeah. Um, you know, so all of that stuff. If, if you're looking at what we're doing, people are tagging at that, and when you search it, this is what it comes up with for for the hashtag for PCPDH9. So there's some sessions. There's presenters. Bobby laughing. <laughs> but yeah, any, anybody who's taking and, and sharing information about the fabulous good night. And the, and the Twitter account, the stuff comes after you sign up and you link it through an email account, you get the Twitter info through that email account. In other words, it shows up in your email. Account. You can you can change your settings that you either get notifications or you don't get notifications. The only notifications I get from Twitter by email is when I have when I have a direct message from somebody. Because if somebody's reaching me in a direct message through Twitter, they're trying to contact me, and they may not have my phone number, they may not have my email, but they have they're a friend of mine on Twitter. So I will get an email that says, You have a direct message from so and so. And then I know that I can log into Twitter, check that direct message, and then respond back to that direct message. Um, some people, um, I know my husband has a group of like people that he interacts with regularly. He will get a text message for, for those people whenever they send a tweet. Um, so his phone will sit there and literally it'll just be like, when your phone comes up that it has from your contact information, it'll say Twitter and then it'll say at Kate Dutters and then whatever Kate tweeted, you know, like she, she tweeted this morning, I, I'm at Podcast Pittsburgh. His, his thing will show up, Twitter, at K Dutters, hey, I'm at Podcamp Pittsburgh. And then he just has a string of them as, as they keep coming in. His phone buzzes constantly because he has it on, on vibrate. But that's how he, he uses it. I don't have mine set for those notifications because when I'm at work, my phone can't buzz like that. It would drive my coworkers insane. Yeah. So I don't have mine set like that. It just depends on what you're using and how you want to get the information. But it goes through, so if it doesn't go through your email, up. Actually, in Twitter itself. Yeah, Twitter. You, you log can, in. You can either go to the website mm -hmm. or you can download. They do have apps for, for phones, for smartphones. So it's just like logging into like an email. Yeah, email. You exactly. Know, you exactly. Log into Twitter and it could just show up. There. Yep. Got it. Okay. And you could follow the people. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and then thinking of it more like um, not not as much like email, but more like Facebook. You log in, you have your, your home page, mm -hmm. and all of your stuff is listed there. Oh, I see. And things. Whether it's you're following people in there. Usually, when you pull it up, it comes up to your main um, 
Yeah, that's that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull up my So when other people look at my Twitter page, this is what they see. I'm going to log in to my Twitter page. Did you design the, the picture that's on the top there? It's a picture that somebody took, I believe, from either last year or the year before. So there could be nothing there if you wanted to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And just with tweet following followers. And while, while you're doing that, what, what's the point of the hashtags? Like, I see that people come up with these creative hashtags. Hashtags, um, there's there's a couple different uses for hashtags. You can, it's, the easiest, the basic function is to follow along a conversation. A uh, particular, maybe an event will have a particular hashtag, um, whether or not um, something going on is, is, is just essentially you can weigh to keep track of what people are saying about a particular thing. Uh, a lot of times you'll hear about hashtag campaigns, where businesses or organizations create uh, essentially their own hashtag that they want and they make a whole campaign around it uh, that they might, um, like the Ice Bucket Challenge is a good example of that, where they created this hashtag and then they created a campaign around it mm -hmm. and that way they were able to see how their campaign was doing. It also gets people excited. It, we, when you see kind of unusual hashtags, you are like, I wonder what that is. So a lot of times you just click on it and see what it is mm -hmm. and that way, you, now suddenly you're aware of something you didn't know but how do you even know it exists? Like, does somebody, because, and how does it show so up? You, you might see somebody talking about it. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm logged into my Twitter account for the podcast Twitter. When I log in and I, it brings up my home page, this is what I see. So, my friend Jen is saying, bummed I couldn't take a picture of David Bowie's bunny outfit at, at, <laughs> at MA, at MCAS Chicago or something like that. PJF Jen is someone that my Twitter, that the Twitter account follows. She is a previous attendee. Um, and, you know, so she is somebody that I was interested in, in following for, for what they're they're posting in their content. She wouldn't lie about David Bowie, so that's really cool. That is very cool. <laughs> um, if I go down and I look through the rest of my feed, these are all people that that I follow. You know, so we have WPXI traffic <clears throat> retweeted uh, the three forty three North Toll booth and Jefferson Hills closed. Um, I follow WPXI traffic, so I see what they tweet. So the front page is anybody that I'm talking with. Now, if I tweet something, it also shows up there. And we're gonna tweet here. I'm going to go ahead and hashtag it PCPGH9, and you see that the hashtag starts to pop up. Those are the ones that are most frequently used at this point. So it, Twitter will find, it'll try to think of what you're trying to type, so you can just click it. So PCPGH9 is what I'm going to click. It automatically fills it in. And then the hashtag is now embedded in there. So we're going to tweet this, and now it comes up in my, my stream, because my tweets also show up in, in my main feed. Oh, that's now, if you notice at the very top up there, it has 13 notifications. This is the notifications that lets us know what people are talking about. If somebody sends a message to me and, and they put, you know, at PC, PC, PCPGH, mm -hmm. um, this is what's going on. So we have the PM session in room B, and that's actually my husband teaching that session over there. Somebody took a photo, and they're checking that out. Uh, we have from uh, Duchess TDK, moderate and ain't easy. She hashtagged it PCPGH9, and she added the PCPGH, which is why it's showing up here in my screen. And then she included a link for Instagram. So if I click on that link, this is the photo that shows up. And it takes to her Instagram page, which is yet another social media plugin, the, the site that you can use for things, obviously photos. Um, and it just kind of brings it all together, and you can see and easily follow what's going on with that notification center. Um, it tells you how long ago these were indicated. So this message from, or this tweet from the Duchess was now four minutes ago that that was tweeted. So you can see something, and if it's something relevant that you wanted to, 
to see if it's something recent, it will give you a timestamp on it. We have two new notifications since I last sent my, my tweet. And Kristen Ward says, hi, back at you, PCPGA, to <laughs> Social Media 101. So that's somebody who follows the PodCamp account, saw that we're teaching the session. And if you actually click on this, it'll tell you, um, what does it tell me though? Usually it shows what the conversation is when I click on them, and I don't know why it's not here. Okay, Go Bobo is also <laughs> commenting to the, the high PCPGH. Um, but when I go home, back to what's in my feed, it will show, here's the original thing. I have six new tweets. In those tweets are also the app messages. So you see the line that says, the, the line that connects the Teaching Live Social Media 101 session, say hi if you see this message, and it has that line that goes down to the where Go Bobo said hi. Right, right there. Oh, yeah. That shows you that he's replying to that Twitter message. So again, it just makes it easier to follow the conversation. Someone can send a picture in um, yeah. an Instagram? I thought it was well, you can send a picture directly in Twitter. It, I meant Twitter. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's a picture on this computer. So <laughs> what are you doing, Katie? Not so much. You're it, taking a picture of me doing the session. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. This is very bad. It's kind of creepy. Um, I'm waiting for Katie to pick her up. Sorry, sorry. Oh, well, what she's doing is she took that picture. She's going to send it. And what it's going to do is she's going to probably tag at PCPGH in it, and it'll show up in the photo stream. And since she's doing it directly through the Twitter app on her phone, the photo will actually show it's up. It's a Twitter app that means that. Yes. Yes. Is it free? Yes. I mean, there are other. So you get the app and then you log in. You you set up an account. Well, yeah, you, you can get up the you can get the app after you set up the account. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now we have we're back to our main landing page. We have four new tweets, and one of them is probably going to be Katie. Not yet. Will be. Katie's just taking forever apparently getting this to the social media. There it is. So here's the picture. And you see that it popped up down in the corner. If you're on your computer over, over here, uh -huh. this allows for a quick response. And it already has Katie tagged in it because she sent the tweet. And it has me at Rebellious Flaw tagged in it because she tagged me in the tweet that I'm teaching us stuff about social media. So if I want to respond, all I can do is click in there reply to, and I start type, typing. And then I hit the tweet down here, and it automatically sends the tweets. Now when I click this few new, two new tweets, I now have this conversation. So it shows the picture of the page. <laughs> I can read that. Oh, that's fine. Does that box just automatically pop up? I'm rarely on actual Twitter.com. That's my problem too. I use Hoot Sweet, so <laughs> I normally use my phone if I'm using Twitter. So yeah. this is this is new to me. Um, but it is popping up as people are adding PCPGH, so I'm, I'm thinking that it is something they've done relatively new. Um, something else that is this kind of with Twitter. I think. Do you go back to my tweet? Uh, what I did with her is. It's really hard to see, but before her name, I put a period. Right. What happens is, if I was if I would just put tweet the rebellious flaw without the period, just to start out with her name first, only people that follow her and I would be able to see. So the, only this small circle of people would be able to see it. But since I put the period in front of it, and then the tweet, everybody who follows me sees that tweet. So it's not necessarily just the two, because you have you're a lower numbers if you have, you're finding somebody who follows the both of us, your numbers are gonna increase in number of followers who follow the both of us. But now all of my followers will see that. And maybe they didn't realize that. Just because you have the dot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for what it's worth, I just learned that. I did not know that before she just mentioned that. So thank you. So see, I've, I've been so talking to her. Otherwise it would have just gone to 
whoever follows us, the two both of us, us. Versus, versus everybody that follows, that follows her. So, oh, so we have you two. Yeah, we have you. We have so many friends in common, and it would only be those people. Question in the back. I was just going to say the other way to avoid that is don't start with the at sign. So start with a word. Yeah. Right, and then put the name in the body of the tweet. Okay, so pretty much just have something before. Right. Like, hey, at so and so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Blah blah blah. Thank you. Because yeah. I knew about that part. I didn't right. know if it was just the period. So that's okay. Mm -hmm. That makes sense now. So what is the hashtag in that? It is hashtag PCPGH9. Yeah, right. That is what we have. Anything that's created through this event, PodCamp Pittsburgh 9. PC for PodCamp, PGH for Pittsburgh. Right. So it's PCPGH9 because this is our PodCamp 9. And one of the advantages of to doing this or putting something in front of it so just my followers see that, I might have somebody who, like, oh, wait a minute, that's Missy. I didn't realize that was her Twitter account. And now Missy gets a follower. Or someone else is now aware of Missy and what she's on, who she is on Twitter. Can you tweet one more thing? Yeah. So I'm going to go back up here, and this is this is on the app. Are you on the app right now? I am. In, just on I'm on the website. You're on Twitter. Website. And if you look up here in the corner, it has this uh, quill-looking uh -huh. thing. That's how you create a new tweet. So I'm going to click on that. It's going to compose a new tweet. Yeah. So I can try and like, and then I hit tweet there, and you notice I can also add a photo and add a location. Since this is, since this is Point Park's laptop, I, I doubt that I'm gonna be able to add a photo, but I'll check and see if I can. Um, we'll go to pictures. Oh, we do have sample pictures. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go with the jellyfish. So I open the jellyfish, and it'll pop it up there. <laughs> if I decide that I don't want to do that, I can always click this little X and it will remove it. But otherwise, and I can add a location, and it's automatically indicated based on where I am that I'm in Pittsburgh. Even better, you can tag someone. Oh, who's in this photo? I'm like, what are you talking about? We can tag Missy in that photo. So we're going to tag Katie in that photo. And I can tag myself. And then I can X out of either of those if I decide that I don't want to tag myself in there. I can do that. So then I click off of that. Katie is indicated over here that she's being tagged. Mm -hmm. And then I hit tweet. But before I hit tweet, you see the 62? Uh -huh. When I said that we had 140 characters, that counts down how many characters you have left. If you start getting close to, you see that it went red. Kind of warns you that you're running out of space, um, so it will it'll prompt that hey, you, you might want to take out some words, you might want to truncate some things in order to, to get it to fit. And then with any kind of posting, tweets are saved for eternity, I assume. You can't. Like, you could delete them. Yeah, but they, they you could still find them somewhere. Generally speaking, yes. So we're tweeting this 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 tweet. It comes up over here. But you didn't put like a hashtag. I did not. But what I'm going to do, you don't have to put a hashtag. Yeah. The majority of my conversations on my account, I don't hashtag. Really? Yeah. The only thing that you really want to hashtag is if you're doing it for like anything. Because the PodCamp Pittsburgh account, there are so many people involved, so many attendees that we don't necessarily follow yet. We wouldn't be able to see their content unless we follow them. By allowing for that hashtag, even if I don't follow somebody, say that I unfollow Katie right now. If I don't follow Katie and she tweets something and she hashtags that PCPGH9, I can still see it even though I don't follow her. You don't want to see hashtags all the time. No. It, it kind of gets a little ugly looking and people really? get annoyed. I have noticed that every once in a while the hashtagging a keyword mm -hmm. will help get more followers. Mm -hmm. and there's, there's, um, if I go to an amazing yoga class, you know, I'll tweet, I'll, I'll tweet out, you know, there's, 
to the great yoga class, well, hashtag yoga, mm -hmm. and then I'll get a couple extra followers out of that. So, well, and that's just it, because people are searching that hashtag yoga, they look at what you tweeted, and they're yeah, like, hey, they'll this, say, oh, belly dance, that's cool too. This took is pretty yeah. awesome, yeah. click, you know, so that, that does happen, and if you're looking for, for more interaction like that, that, that's a good way to do it. And why would you care whether there are a lot of people? So your it point. just builds your audience. Because I'm again, an entertainer, so I use my Twitter feeds to let people know when I'm having shows. And the more people that follow you, mm -hmm. the more people, like if she retweets something that you tweet, <clears throat> all of the people that are following her account will now see the tweet that, of yours that she retweeted. Uh, so I mean, it just kind of it builds a larger, yeah, it, it builds a larger audience. Um, plus, if she retweets something of yours, if I don't follow you, and I like the tweet that she retweeted, I can go to your Twitter, I can look at the stuff that you've tweeted. Really? And I can look and say, an outside this, person can look at. Yeah, this, this person is kind of cool. I'm going to mm -hmm. follow this person. Mm -hmm. And then I'm now following you because I saw her <coughs> tweet. Do you ever reject somebody who wants to follow you? Yeah. Or you don't have that control with you? you, you can, it, depends, it depends on how you have your account set up. My account is set up that anybody can follow me. Okay. If you have a. You can have a little you can have a more private account. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've learned in years past that with my name being associated with PodCamp, either as a presenter or as a, an organizer, I, people would try to direct message me. If you don't follow me, you can't DM me. If, if I don't follow you, it, 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 that's just how it works. So people would try to, be, to contact me with a question about the event, and they can't reach me. So I, I've unlocked mine to assist with, with that. Um, if if you're dealing with you know kids that are tweeting, you know you, you can set privacy settings to kind of protect your your information that your your child is putting out there on the internet. Because I was just looking, you don't have any like at hashtag blah blah blah, but on TV they always like say like these really clever like ha 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 what a clever hashtag. So I thought that was required. No, no. Nope. But people do it to get followers or to make yeah, it like, and, and like stand out a little bit. The biggest thing, like the reason that we do the hashtag PCPDH9 is as an organizer of the event, I want to see what people have said about the event. And if they didn't at PCPDH, as in like they responded directly to, to the account, as long as they tagged it hashtag PCPDH9, I can go back and I can look for the hashtag and I can see what everybody has said about the event from the weeks leading up to the event. Because there's a hashtag. Yes. But you didn't hashtag this. No, I, just, I did not hashtag this. Now, if I put a tweet out there that I want to delete, if I click on this ellipsis here, the dot, 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 I have the option to delete tweet, share via direct message, which means I can send that tweet directly to somebody as a direct message instead of as a public message. Um, I can share it by email. Put it in a Twitter. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I can embed the tweet, so if I want to put it on like my web page or something, it'll, it, it'll give me a link that I can embed through that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. Okay. Now, are you sure you want to delete this tweet? I'm going to delete this tweet. Now, here's the fun part, because if anybody actually saw that tweet and responded to that tweet, they saw the tweet. I can't make them not have seen it. Okay. So again, it's, it's one of those, make sure that what you're putting out there, you really want people to see. Because if you do something, um, it's been in the news, not recently, but previously that uh, companies have, have tweeted things inappropriately, but people have seen those tweets before they've been deleted, and it's created a huge media buzz in addition to just problems for the company because of what they've tweeted, um, whether it's a racial slur or if it's just in general. Even if they deleted it, it was already out there. Exactly. And the nice thing is that even though it's been deleted, I can take a, a screen capture. So I can have it up on my screen before it gets deleted. I can take a picture of it, and then I can share that picture and say, do you see this? They deleted the tweet, but I got a picture of it before they deleted the tweet. It happened. Um, you know, so, so that's why you want to make sure that you're, you're tweeting what you want to tweet. Do you want to take a couple other questions? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Can you talk a little bit about Instagram? 
because I know like a lot of people are like crazy about it and <clears throat> Instagram's great because essentially you're just taking a picture. People love pictures. They they really can engage with pictures. They can get a lot more out of it. a picture's worth a thousand words. You get a lot more from it. You can pull up my Yeah, because I don't use mine. Oh yes. <laughs> Go ahead. And um And it's, it's also very popular with, um, what's that word? Right. <laughs> um, with younger people, because they do like doing the um, more visual social media sites. Yay, young people. Yay. Oh, there's you. That was what she was reading. Hi, Jen. Uh, I, I just saw somebody with that same picture on my email. Yeah, really? Where's that from? Oh, it's a David Bowie exhibit in uh, Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I just I got that. Um, one of my favorite things about Instagram. This is this is my Instagram page. I'm very much all over the place. If you haven't noticed in that just that short thing. Um, essentially, this is we'll start with this is my one from last night. Um, I was up on Mount Washington, and I posted a picture of my view. And it, for me, I like Instagram. It's very short. It's very sweet. It's, it's a picture, and then I can talk about. Silly, I can be serious, I can um, do a lot of different things with it. Uh, I do. So, Instagram is kind of like the Twitter for pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, just, just to kind of put it into perspective for you. I've heard it jokingly referred to as Twitter for people who can't read. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, <laughs> blue shiny, this, this one likes pictures. I mean, so. and, and that's just it. I go through, I have an Instagram account. I eat more. Stalk people on it. I, I don't really post a whole lot of things. Is there a question? Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, you're, you're fine. This is a Twitter question. I don't know if you know the answer or not. But um, sure. can you, once you've set up your Twitter account mm -hmm. and time passes, and if you want to change your Twitter name, your app, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Can you do it? And if you do it, do you lose all your followers? You don't lose your followers. Okay, you don't lose. But it's hard for people to to know that it's you. Mm -hmm. Because I've had people in my stream change their names and I didn't realize they did. And I'm looking like, who is this person? I don't remember ever following them. And then I pull up like their profile information. I'm like, oh, Got that's it. that person. Okay. You know, so. Mine's so long. I just don't want it anymore. It's too long. <laughs> <laughs> it takes many characters. what I was doing. Like, oh my God, this is too long. So I don't want to just shorten it and then people still recognize it. That's what I was yeah. thinking too. Yeah. yeah. It's not much easier if you retweet it too. I'm sorry. You get in a, you run into a problem with the long Twitter names. They, it's harder for people to retweet you because right, you've exactly. already had to cut off. Yes, exactly. And your grammar is getting worse and worse in the tweet. <laughs> right. There's numbers instead of words. Oh, yeah, yeah. I do that all the time. I love that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, love that. Yes. <laughs> I love having to not spell things correctly. Yeah, that is that is one of the nice things about social media. Mm -hmm. no. This is one of my posts, and you'll see on here that I did. It's another situation where you can use hashtag. I did hashtag it with uh, BBQ. Where, 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 oh. This is a, so the hashtag came after you said whatever you wanted yeah, to I say. Yeah, I like to throw it at the end. And it doesn't matter. matter. You can put it at the front, you can put it at the back. I prefer to put it at the back as well. Get my belly <laughs> And just because I put that in there, I had people who were looking for the words BBQ, and they found this in like this picture. And then they'll interact that way, and they're like, oh, wait a minute, I actually got this at this place. And then since I marked my location, which you don't have to do, um, I don't know if it'll come up on here or not. But if, I think on the app it's a little bit easier, but it'll actually pop up where I was located, where I checked in at with this picture. So if someone was like, oh, that's great, I want to go eat there, they can click on that and figure out where I ate. Yeah, and again, for the social, like for the phone application of it, it's nice because you click on something like that, and usually it's, it's kind of smart that you can click and get a map and you just click and get directions wow. to that. Wow. Um, depends on how the business has everything set up for it to pull it up. And, and if you have a hashtag then can people who are searching around for barbecue, mm -hmm. but they, they would be searching in Twitter. It wouldn't that would be You can search you can search it in Twitter. You can search the hashtags and Instagram. Um, it depends on where you are. Not the Twitter, just the Instagram. If you're searching an Instagram, it's going to pull up any Instagram with that with that hashtag. 
uh, if you look at Twitter, it's going to pull up your, your Twitter with that stuff with that hashtag. Okay, so they're distinct. It's not yeah. like you can't just search the yeah, web. Yeah, I mean, you can, say, you can tweet an Instagram link uh -huh. using Twitter. Um, so, I mean, that, that integration would kind of have the two of them together, but it is yes. still two distinct social media so platforms. you can't search for, a, for an Instagram link in Twitter. You're in Twitter. Can you search for... Like, you can search for keywords, but not a specific link. The problem with, with explaining Instagram from a, a computer is most of the functions for functionality for Instagram are set up for mobile technology. It's more for mobile. Um, because it's Instagram. You're like, here's a picture, I'm posting it. It's not so much, I'm sitting in front of my laptop, look at me. It's more for the instant, for the Instagram. And same thing with Twitter. It's more to quickly get something out there. Yes. Yeah. But you have almost as many options on both on the computer and your phone for Twitter, but Instagram is not that much. Yeah, Instagram would be more for your mobile. Yeah. So you have the options to uh, do a little bit more with that. And the nice thing about Instagram is you can also post what you're posting on your Facebook and your Twitter accounts, your Tumblr, a lot of your other social media sites from uh, Instagram itself. So what they can, what you can do is you can push out content to not only you know just your Instagram feed, but now your Twitter followers are seeing it, your Facebook followers are seeing it, because it's all connected to your Instagram. That's another nice thing about Instagram itself is it's the fact that we push out so much to it from it actually. I'm sorry. Yeah. So that does it all. That would do send out the same thing all in one without having to use like Hootsuite. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. That's great. But again, it's it's. <laughs> it's it's a picture platform, so if you're if you're looking to send out like words, it, it's not as unless there's a picture. It's like a picture and a caption. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So so depending on what you're doing with it. So and what's the difference between what was the other social media platform that you mentioned in that sentence? Uh, like, Tumblr. Maybe? Tumblr. Yes. That that's a they call it a microblog. It's it's like a blog, but not as intense as far as setup. You set up everything through Tumblr, T U M B L R, and where it's an easy place. You post. It's very similar. You can post pictures and words and links, and then other people can share your content from there. Uh, it doesn't involve finding a host. You do it all through Tumblr. So you could post pictures, links. Why do that yeah. versus Facebook? It depends. It depends on what you're looking to do with it. Um, Tumblr is more of a website, so you have your, your information, it's static, whatever whatever content you're putting out there is, is what you have there. Um, if you're looking to do more interactive things, Facebook is a little bit easier for interactive because it's easier for people to comment, you can respond. Um, it depends on how you're using it, is, is what it boils down to. Okay. And Pinterest? Pinterest is kind of like a community board for content on the internet. So back in the day, you used to take your, your little flyer into the, the local grocery store and tack it up on their right. push pin wall. That's kind of what Tumblr, or I'm sorry, what uh, Pinterest does. Uh, anything that you would want to have for quick reference tends to your board. Anything that you want to share and have anybody who's following you follow that information, it, it puts it right there. Um, I'm starting to, <laughs> I do a lot of baking, so I do like, I follow baking. If there's something that I, I see in Pinterest that I'm like, ooh, I want to make that. There was actually a seven layer cake that somebody had put on there, and it was a s'mores cake. So it had like s'more, chocolate chip cookies, um, <laughs> marshmallow. I mean, it, it was insane, and it looked amazing. So I pinned it because I wanted to have quick access to the recipe so that I can, I can get to it. Um, but yeah, it, it's generally. And, Put the information there so it's easy for you to come back to. Brands will use Pinterest uh, sometimes too. Uh, it's Nike, this is for example, Nike Women. I'm sorry, I'm not really logged in, log in. But Nike has it and they'll post different things in here. They might be like, Shoe Love, these are some shoes we have coming out. Uh, fall 2014 style guides. When you go in here, you can see um, different things that Nike has pinned in this particular, on this particular board. So you, this is a place to highlight your product. You have different products or yeah. things that you want to highlight. You can do it that way, and it kind of groups them nicely together. So you see these things? <laughs> no. I, I got on Pinterest the other night just to look up a skirt pattern, and I have five followers already. And I'm like, I'm not even going to use them. It. It's not patterns. 
Well, and that's just it. Like I use mine for, like I said, for for a, a bulletin board thing. I use it for recipes that I want to try. For you. you know, if I'm looking for, for something, you. exactly. I don't use it for a social tool to get my information out there. But obviously, Nike does. They want you to look, they want you to check out their yeah. stuff. Um, so you can use it either way. Um, my stuff has been refollowed because I I put pictures of baked goods that I've made, and I've had people. So you could put like recipes. On Absolutely, your own recipes. And that's the nice thing is because mm -hmm. it draws it in with a picture. Uh -huh. You click on the picture and it takes you to a site. Um, so if I put the picture of the recipe that you made, yeah, then I can link it back to my website that actually has uh, the recipe is the word I'm looking for. That has the recipe on my website. Oh, you can't put the recipe on Pinterest. It's limited as to what information you can put on there. Um, I mean, you can, but people are looking at the pictures more precisely, and it's easier to just link it so back to something. More of the Plus, the other thing is, it would drive more content to your website if you make people click to your website in order to look at what you're trying to, to put out there. Okay. You know, can I log in? <laughs> um, yeah, Kate, Katie's pulling up some, some additional information over here. But uh, I, I'm not very, I don't, I don't use Pinterest. Yeah, Pinterest, Pinterest is kind of newer. Well, no, it, it's, it's newer. Oh, and actually becoming more popular with brands. Yeah, and, and that's a, is branding. People, you, you can create different bulletin boards for things, and it's easier to content management. If, it's, if this is something that I'm going to put for blogging, if this is something that I'm going to put for tweeting, if this is something that I'm going to put for, you know, this, you know, if I like, if I like fall couture, I can create a board for fall couture, and I can follow that sort of content. If I'm looking for the awesome next invention for something, I can create something for that. What is that? One of the best ways to use a disposable camera for Buzzfeed. Interesting. Um, that's okay. But, but that's just kind of, like I said, I look at it like a community board. People that I follow put their stuff up there. If I like it, I can then look at their pen. I can repin it to my boards so that I have it for quick reference. And if I want to share stuff, I can put it out there and then people will repeat my stuff. I am so humble out there, but I'm sorry that I'm like the idiot of the class here. Yeah, it's, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. We I mean I just no, you know, know it's maybe two weeks for one more. We answer questions. questions. That's that's good. That's fine. Um is um, what about if you want, um, if you want to do like a community, like I'm on various listservs, mm -hmm. so with that you can put in social media if you want to do, develop a community listserv, and so you want to start your own listserv. Is that social media or that's not within the group or the framework? Social media, um, unfortunately, well not unfortunately, but for social media has most people, when they think of social media, it's defined as certain uh, social media platforms. And listservs were the original social media. I mean, that, that's how it really came about, oh, really? the inter interactions. Social media is just basically the networking of certain people together in a group and the conversations that they have. Okay. So a listserv is the very, very basic of a social media website. Okay. Or a social media yeah, so it, it does fit the bill. It depends on how you use it. Yeah. Okay, so let's say if you want to do a listserv, well, I, I'm just going to be frank, where I, I just moved here, Pittsburgh, and where I'm from, there were these vibrant, active um, community listservs. Okay. And I'm not finding that here, maybe, that I'm not aware of it. So if I wanted to start one, I mean, even where would I, do I sign, is there a place where I sign up for listserv, or, I mean, how do you even start it? It's something that I've, 